and I'm Yang Yixing. These are my teammates Liu Xiao, Yan Zhu, and Tao Zihan. It's an honor here to share you guys with our perspective towards this topic. And before we officially get started, I want to ask a question. How many of you have already experienced the three cleaners before? Okay, I'm the luckiest one. <laughs> I've experienced this um, young technology in the art library of School of Management, and I'm deeply impressed by its um, time efficiency as well as the final results it delivered. And we all know that China, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, missed the first industrial revolution. And 100 years before, we missed, we missed the second one. And the third one, kind of lucky, we developed our computer science, and we are not lagging behind. But for this time, we want to lead maybe the fourth industrial revolution. This time, we're going to talk about 3D printing. And to make our presentation, we use 3D printer opportunity for industrialization 4.0 in China. And let's get officially started. First of all, I'd like to give you guys a bigger picture of the topic we're going to talk about today. China has great potential and capability to develop 3D printer. This is our result of the, this case. Why we say so? Because after considering all the factors mentioned in the case, we believe that China has both feasibility and future possibility to leverage this young technology. Let's just take a big look at the external factors we get from the case. Firstly, we all know that uh, one biggest barrier for the young technology to develop in the future is the intellectual property protection. But the good news is that in 2014, a lot of um, a lot of patents are going to get expired, and more and more companies can leverage this news to um, create more creative ideas on based on that. More than that, speaking of 3D printers, our team believe there are a lot of business opportunities lurking in the idea of it because of its um, time efficiency because of it can highly um, personalize uh, its high possibility of customization. And we believe all those characteristics are going to help with all those producers and the manufacturers to cope with those peakier and peakier customers in this, uh, in this time period. And then we need to um, consider all the Chinese specific characteristics. Firstly, we have government support. Just a few days ago, the government just released some policies um, based on this uh, 1035 strategy. We are going to encourage um, the development and the, uh, the, the creation of those young technology, and definitely 3D print is one of them. More than that, China has already um, become a first mover in this industry. Um, we have already got some accumulated experience in this industry and Chinese people are definitely smart. We have the confidence to master it in the near future. More than that, China um, is called an uh, innovation imitative innovation country, which means we have the ability to study from the other countries and then we transform their innovation, become something um, become something more and our creation is going to be better than them and we have those um, confidence to commercialize this um, 3D printers, um, 3D printer technology. And my teammates are going to um, give a more detailed description on how we are going to execute our strategy and make our um, perspective come true. And basically we are going to focus on different stages and for the current stages we're going to pay more attention to the standardized and customerized uh, process of the manufacturing. And in the end of the day, we want to build up a 3D printer ecosystem. And now I'm going to hand it over to my teammates to um, talk more about our strategy. So as we mentioned, the 3D technologies it's potentially to make the manufacturing industry to go digital. So many people began to worry that whether China can still be the manu manu uh, world manufacturing after the 3D technology application. And our answer is yes. 
There are really two reasons to support. The first is the technology advantage. As each you just mentioned now, China is very famous for the innovative innovations. So whenever a new or popular product or uh, 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 technology emerges, China is always the first, among the first to catch the fashion, and make, make some changes and make it more user-friendly. So it is the same with the 3D technology now. So according to uh, uh, as the case presented, in 2000, uh, in 2003, the Chinese, uh, uh, Chinese uh, manufa China manufactured about 20,000 uh, 3D printers, and among them, 60% are expo uh, exported to the uh, global market. And also, Chinese, Chinese manufacturers are among the first to make effort in building the ecosystems of the 3D technologies, including the printers, the scanners, and the manufacturers. So in all, China has the advantages technology here. Uh, the second reason is the low cost. To explain the low cost, we separate into two. The, the localization and the globalization. For the localization part, China's, um, China's manufacturing success is partly due to the reason of lower uh, man manpower costs. Uh, however, this, though, this, uh, though this advantage is not that obvious, our, our manpower cost is still lower than the world average. Um, of, and one second is our nature advantage. It's a big domestic market. It's that it, this advantage is more obvious, especially when it comes to some time efficiency product. So for example, uh, repairing repairing a car is always a very bad experience for my mother. And not because that the repair cost is very high, it's more the repairing times. Generally it takes seven or ten days to get a car back. Although get the car back, although it is only a little problems, but the problem is that there are not available parts in the 4S stores. So it's quite easy to understand this situation. So in a traditional supply chain management, the manufacturing collect the material, then they product the product, then they produce the parts, they transport to the warehouse, then finally go to the 4S stores and to the customer. So which means the part may be miles, miles away from the customers. And that's to say the manufacturing part is very far from customers. So the customer takes customer small time to get their car repaired. So with the 3D uh, product, the manufacturing part is much, much closer to the to the customers. This means that closer that the customers can quickly get their parts. It must be a very good experience, a short experience for the customers. And the second part is the global globalization. As we mentioned in your localization. The time efficient thing is something that involves with the distance. So we cannot, uh, for some time efficiency product, we cannot, we cannot conquer on China to produce it, then transport over the seas to uh, some rich countries. So we uh, mainly focus on some stable demand product. For example, the buttons on the clothes. So, 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 so in this part, we are still have lower manpower cost, and also we have some commercial supply chain infrastructures based on our manufacturing success this year. And that was the customer part. Well, thank you for my partner to introduce the standardized 3D application. But there is another part which may be low volume but will be customized 3D application. Let me introduce this for you. And we may select the fashion industry as a good start. So why is it a good start? Let me brief you. So first, as we know that the Chinese GDP is growing, we have more income. So that these markets definitely a booming total market. So that we have places to sell our products. And second, as the wages of people has risen, we care not about not only about that we have clothes to wear or not, but also about the fashion trend. We need to get to know that we have very demand at this time. Imagine, when you have a good design of a cloth, because at that time, maybe it's fashionable at that time, but lower down, but um, when, we, when time flies, when, uh, when people really produce them, and when we get the product, maybe it's not fashionable anymore, and you don't want that at that time. And you want, it to be, want the fashion clothes to be produced as soon as possible so that you can roll it immediately, right? And 
So that's why we should introduce 3D print printers. So let's see why 3D printers is applicable, applicable and also adventurous at this stage. First, in China, we have a solid base of the manufacturers scattered around the whole country, and we have solid customer base, and also we have a lot of distribution channels to ward out customers. And second, about the clothing industry, it's very special industry because it can be made, the clothes can be made with only one single material, not like uh, automobile industry because we need a lot of mixed like steel or other mixed materials. So for those steel, a uh, single material is quite easy to be realized and we can produce the whole thing immediately. And then uh, about the 3D printers, first it can, it can decrease the whole cost as my partner just introduced, we can slow down time so that we can increase the frequency that we produce. And also we can slow down the fee, especially the distribution part. And another part, we can make the fast changing it, just like what we have what I have listed about the fashion trend. We need to get catch on with that trend as fast as possible. So let me introduce to you about how we will realize it. And the second part first see the traditional uh, supply chain models. We design clothes and we deliver them. The, then we put the design ideas to the manufacturers and the manufacturer. And then we ship it to far uh, market to the customer. So that's a long line supply chain. But now we can ship that. So we can ship that to a cycle supply chain, which means that we will have a non-line design and other platform. What's like in this platform? It will be a solid base because in these platforms, we will have a lot of people to join in. Maybe these people, they have great ideas. They know how to design clothes. So they can all become a member of this platform and they share their new ideas about the clothes. For example, you can put the graph of your new designs into this platform and, other, and the other people will vote for you whether they like these clothes or not. So that we can know that first we can get innovation ideas. There's a good resource because we it's just like open source and we can generate a lot of ideas from a lot of people and it's really a source of innovation. And second, um, after we know that the needs of people, we can have the data. You know, data is very important because we can not only know what they demand, but also we can predict what they might need, how much they will purchase in this area. After we know that, we can deliver those ideas and these data to the local manufacturers. And the local manufacturers will manufacture these clothes and then deliver them to the uh, online orders or directly to the real stores. And what's good in it? First, we can have low cost because we can increase the frequency um, and also we can lower down the distribution cost. And second, um, there will be a quick, a quick demand meeting and um, we can meet with the fashion as quick as possible so that we won't be out of date. And third, um, we can separate our business into two parts. First, since we want to be profitable, then we, after we get the big data, we can still use the mass production so that we, we can meet the common needs. And for another part, since we have a socialized platform, then we can know some maybe low volume but special needs. Then we can customize those clothes and deliver those to people who need them. And what's good in it? To sum it up, I can summarize with three words. First, we can increase the speed which means we can transform faster from the ideas to the uh, end products. And second, it's quite sustainable, which means that um, first we have source of innovations so that we won't, uh, we won't need to imitate the others anymore. And um, second, we can predict the need and also meet the that need. And third, we, it's, very, it's a solid way because we already have a platform. And using that platform, we, we can explore further and we can uh, use it as an attractive basis and explore further. And of course, this is only one of the uh, fashion industry that we selected. And 
uh, as it, because it's reprehensible, and we can explore further to other fast changing um, industries. And that's my personal to sum up. Thank you. So, as you know from the case, our client is a Chinese manufacturer. And rather consultants, we want our client to take advantage of this 3D trend. And our my teammates, they all, they already talked about you know some strategy in different area. First, which is the easiest one, is to focus on the standardized area, like to make the button. We don't need lots of you know design. It's like though China is kind of losing the low cost labor, but we still have the advantage for uh, maybe for several years, we could still take advantage of it. Because of the low cost, we could still export those standardized product to other country. And the second one, so we could focus on the customized area. And for this area, we could, you know, so like just my teammate mentioned, follow the fashion industry, use the big data to predict, to, to manufacture what the market really wants. And also, my teammate, just to mention a really brilliant idea that is to use the you know the inside of everyone to let everyone design and to to design is for us to design for everyone but there is one concern that is we all know if for a company it wants to make profit it's really important to reach the scale economy but it's really hard to you know design for one person besides you know my teammate wants to dress and design for it, but I cannot. I can just make money from her. But how could we really make customization profitable for us? And our solution is to decentralization and to build the ecosystem and to let more people get involved in our production. And so what we will do in in China, if you have ever lived in China, you will know how Taobao means to us. Which is very important. Okay, so Taobao is you know one is one platform which is very like uh, eBay, but it's not really you know uh, the same. It's one one uh, uh, firm under the Alibaba group. So it's like our solution. So we want okay, okay, we want to cooperate to the Taobao sellers, and so why would we choose them? Because you know there are Taobao sellers everywhere. They know they know the local needs, and because of the small production, they're more flexible. And uh, also, it's like those you know, sellers, they have the passion to make a fortune, to, um, to, to take advantage of this opportunity. And so that's the reason we want couple sellers to be a part of our ecosystem. And so what the ecosystem will be like. So this is the structures. First, we will just uh, cooperate with some uh, mature suppliers. And uh, um, we, when we go further with our strategy, we want to be also be the manufacturer, the printer, and the material supplier. And uh, in this way, we will sell printer to those Taobao sellers, and Taobao sellers will you know interact with the uh, buyers and you know, make customize the goods for them. And uh, for the two, and they will just you know, give us the feedback about you know, what could be the trend for the market, and then we could as the Big manufacturer, we could achieve the mass manufacturing and you know, sell more products to you know the whole market, and at, uh, and also to make this business model sustainable, we not only uh, sell printer to those Taobao sellers, we also give them service, and also because we partner or you know acquire some material 3D material suppliers, we may also give them, you know, sell them material. So we make this uh, business model, we build this ecosystem, and I believe in this way, and uh, we could really help China to achieve this, you know, just like my team mentioned, this industrialization for all zero. And so in summary, and so we have this, you know, three strategy for a different, uh, you know, for a different area. And for the standardized, we will we'll just uh, take okay take advantage of our low cost of labor and uh, our you know experience on this technology, and still use our you know low cost advantage to export to to make profit. On the um, second day, we'll just uh, focus on the customized group, use the big data, and to predict the market trend, and uh, still focus on the man, uh, mass manufacturing. And uh, the third strategy is to build the ecosystem and to 
will not be the will not only be the manufacturer for the goods. We will also you know produce the printer and also produce service for those you know top of sellers and top of sellers and you know, we'll give back give back. Uh, some data about the, the market and then probably we'll just uh, you know uh, produce some goods for the whole market and we believe with this three strategy we can really help our clients and uh, really help China to win in this the industrialization for O zero okay thank you <laughs> thank you Fudan University team <laughs> Let's let's give them another round of applause. Um, now you have 15 minutes. Uh, the the judges will have a 15 minute uh, time to do Q and A. So um, let me start the timer now. Well, firstly, thank you very much for a very informative presentation. You guys did a really good really good job. Uh, so well done. Um, um, one question. So you're very clearly very positive about the uh, potential of 3D printing, particularly in China. Um, I had lots of uh, good ideas, particularly around, for example, the ecosystem example you gave was a very good example, very good idea. My question is, just, what do you see as the disadvantages and risks uh, of 3D printing? You know, for us, for our business, we should obviously I can see the potential, but what do you think we need to be worried about? I mean, Risk we should okay, so I think the biggest risk, uh, actually we already mentioned, that is because you know the three D print, uh, printing technology will really cut down the cost. You know, so we may not need that lots of labors. So the one of the biggest risk is you know, this manufacturing may go back to those you know developed country because they are more good at technology and design. So actually we already you know keep up. Uh, come up with some idea to cope with the challenge. It's one thing is like so we first of all we focus on those standardized you know product and also it's like because we focus on the customized because you know as chi Chinese manufacturer would know the local needs so that's the advantage you know over those you know foreign manufacturer and uh, and the other one is the our experience on this area. So as you can see from the case, we already you know mastered some technology, and we kind of you know uh, adapted to you know our technology. And, and to um, add some extra points to summarize what my teammates have mentioned, we're going to use the standardized products as well as the real-time response to win the competition. And just to, um, answering the question you've already raised about the rest. Um, besides what my teammate have mentioned, um, I think maybe technology uh, will also pose some threats to the future development because uh, although we are very optimistic about what street painter is going to be, but nobody would actually know what kind of you know technology we're going to be copy, you know, produce all those stuff in large scale, and um, so far we we can only produce um, those kind of stuff in one material. So if you want to pr uh, produce more complex um, products, maybe more technologies needs to be um, needs to be developed. Yes. Yeah. And uh, Jay, you you get two very good examples. One was around buttons. Yeah. Buttons. One was around your uh, mother's uh, car. Yeah, car parts. Car parts. What are, what are your views, relative views on the applicability of the three D printing on both of those from a quality perspective? So you mean the quality things for the car for the quality thing for car and the button? So for example, you know, one of the things, you know, if, you, if, you, if a button is made imperfectly, yeah, okay. the risk of that versus yeah, okay. a car part, let's say an important car part, the Yeah, that's a very, a very big and a very challenging question. So in other words, we, we know that this technology is just premature. We cannot guarantee their quality, and the, uh, how long that can 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 it work is a very big big problem, and it is some kind of te te technology problems. But in other parts, we mean that some parts of a car that is not uh, that safe, the safety problems not that important. Yeah, and it can be easy to make, but we can can get it immediately due to the inventory available and availability. So this is our 
uh, intention to give this uh, example means that we need some parts, but we cannot get them immediately due to the unavailable things. Although the, sa the safety thing is a long way we need to long way we need, need to solve. Just yeah. We are mapping out a blue, uh, a rosy complexion maybe we can reach in the future. And we kind of treat our strategy as a step-by-step -step strategy. And so far, maybe we'll just focus on those outer parts, like, you know, the decoration, something like that. But in the end of the day, we are dream. The big dream is to produce each part in the automobile. We need more patience. Yeah, so, so, so one from last, one, last question, what would be your advice then to a company like ours? that is starting to just think about this, how should we manage our risks yeah. uh, if we're going to embark on this area? You mean it's like our, no, so you are the, our clients, yes. how could we manage your risks? Yeah, how, what would you, how would you advise us? Okay, so I think first of all it's like we already, you know, my team has already mentioned the technology and the risk. So first of all is I think for the technology part, um, I think we'll just use those virtual technology to produce those outfit thing so you know not involving lots of safety issue yeah that should that would be a pilot state stage and also and because we want to you know to to be a part of this industrialized force zero so which means we need to develop the technology and uh, so we will just uh, you know, have our own you know, research center to research on that and also we may go out and invest on some you know, firms which may have more advanced technology and uh, those technology, technology may help us in our strategy you know, in the future like you know, to make car components, to make you know, you know, to customize some goods, to make printer um, we all know, know that, uh, I believe that, or you all know that smart curve in China is just in the middle, which means that we have low markup during the manufacturing part. And now we see that the green printers are mainly uh, uh, applied in this manufacturing part. But I think um, the first question that we need to think about is, well, where all the designs come from, where all the innovations come from. That's why I propose the design part because we need a platform so that we can generate, we can open source, and we can get more ideas from more people. And only if we have those designs, we have uh, those innovative ideas, and we can manufacture them. And as for the technology parts, and we see that we have a large population, and we have a lot of ideas. I believe that on China, we have ability to improve the technology since we have a lot of great ideas. Yes. I have a question because you mentioned that imitative innovation is something that you know, you can look at and adapt to. Now there is a very fine line between imitation and innovation. Okay? When you look at something, a design or a pattern, you can imitate or you can look at what is developed and innovate. Now in that fine line, if there's a technological um, considerations, it's ethical considerations, safety aspect considerations, all this is between two accounts. And I think you mentioned about setting up a research center and all that. What are the key components of looking at how you design and how you control quality and how you minimize risk and how you add value to the whole entire chain by using this concept? For me, I think this question is based on how we um, how we define imitative and innovation. And from my perspective, what we are going to imitate from those foreign competitors is that how they um, how they generate all these ideas and the core concept of how they make this um, product applicable how to um, I mean the basic the basic roles of the product the basic equation something like something like the basic equation the base we are going to um, learn from their basis how they um, add extra things on that well, I think we are going to customize the the base of their um, technology and add on more characteristic, more localization, more localized characteristic on it to create something belonging to uh, our own. And um, as you mentioned, maybe it will bring about some ethic questions, maybe the plagiarism or something like that. But uh, we think uh, we are going to uh, pay attention to the risk control to make sure what we uh, what we are doing is not. Um, uh, doesn't contradict the law, and based on that, we can, you know, uh, maybe reach a synergy, combining 
what they've accomplished, and what we are going to add. And as I mentioned in the strategy ecosystem, I think in that system, we want to, uh, just like your question, how could we add value in this you know, chain, right? So we will build the ecosystem, and we want to you know, achieve win-win for all the partners in that. Like you know, for those Taobao sellers, they own the shop, they want to make profit. It's like, so maybe you see you know, some people, some, you know, um, some people, they have great idea, some great design, you know, you may you know concern that we may just copy their idea, but I think this is not what we want to do, and this is not what we want to suggest our kind to do. So we want to make them well part of our uh, ecosystem. It's like so maybe we have the contract, they will just uh, give us the, some information about the market or some design, and uh, if we use it, we will just you know like pay them or you know to 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 achieve the win-win, and I think that could be the value we add. To, uh, add, for, uh, add to this channel and for the market, we could you know give them more timing and more you know uh, up to date product and especially to achieve you know um, some people's needs like per month to you know in, in, in the you know, for for as yeah. shop. So I think that's the value we could add you know to our market. You get to. Um Different examples of fashion, buttons, and cars, and, um, and your possible solution. I think is great coming up with those sorts of ideas. Obviously, there's a number of different types and aspects to manufacturing, lots of different types of products. Um, have you considered that the impact on 3D printing may actually be different, different types of manufacturing, and therefore? How flexible do you think? I think it's an admirable idea. How flexible do you think that is? Because uh, it, it may not be one solution for every different type of manufacturing. So, have you considered there's more than one just type of manufacturing? You may require a different solution for different types of manufacturing. So far, actually, the 3D printer is a concept like you add different materials to the same layer. So I think um, the mo uh, all of the products are moldable in the 3D printing part. Maybe the I think the biggest challenge is the material part. How you're going to add different layers of material and to produce different um, products with different characteristics like cloth, metal, and uh, yes, uh, there is still a long way to go. But so far, um, are you going to add some? Um, and I also think um, what you have asked is not actually a challenge. And it's a challenge, but I think that's exactly why we need to use 3D printers. Because we can predict the need. You know, the need varies over time. But when the time, um, uh, when the time flies and one people have different needs, we can manufacture them with 3D printers. Because it's um, quite scalable and we can adjust them according to different needs. And that's just why we need the 3 printers because we can predict needs and adjust ourselves and accustomed to those needs. Do you not, do you not think, um, I agree with what you just said, but do you think, do you not think um, uh, manufacturers in the developed world can do exactly the same thing? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we consider that. Uh, yeah, they could do the same thing. And just like uh, we mentioned earlier, it's like, I think in this area, um, so far we have two main advantages. One is to our low cost. Um, with low cost is in you know two two way the way the stew we have the labor low cost because you know even though you use the printer, some you still need some you know, labor to deliver and to design and the other one is the technology we use and because you know uh, we already do some kind of innovation in China like the printing technology we make it a kind of in a cheaper way and uh, also because of the material in China is also cheaper so I think that's one advantage over those you know uh, manufacturing developed country and the other one is I think for the huge China domestic market so as Chinese manufacturer, we know the local needs, we are here. So I think 
because you know for one thing because you know one of our idea for this you know for zero industrialization is we want to achieve the decentralization of production and uh, in China you know, to, um, we already have this you know saw you because for them because in different market as I we, we just produced there use the 3D printer just like what I mentioned those you know top of seller they just you know cater to the local needs and it's also easier for them to deliver those products to the customers so I think that could be our advantage you know, over those in the developed country yeah. and also China is only part of the world competition but we, we don't all want to occupy all the market I think for the time efficiency part it's hard to count on try, try, Chinese to produce some some products and then tra transport it to the foreign. I think some some of the products due to the 3D technology should produce in developed countries, just according to customer need. That's what we want to do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nine seconds. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's just time to say thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, team.